Not too long ago, I reviewed the Galaxy Book 2 360, which was an S Pen compatible AMOLED touchscreen. And this right here is the Galaxy Book 2. Not 360, not AMOLED, not a touchscreen. It's just a more standard 15 inch laptop with the same performance, same Samsung ecosystem features, but at a lower price point. Now, this laptop comes in multiple variants across regions and the availability will depend on which country you're in, but it does come with both Core i5 and Core i7 CPUs with 8 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM as option. To be honest, the Galaxy Book 2 looks like any other laptop, but you really start to benefit by it if you start to use it with a Galaxy smartphone or a Galaxy tablet. For example, you can use QuickShare and transfer very heavy files very fast between Galaxy devices because they just work so well together. You can also keep your files, photos and videos that are on your phone synced with the laptop. You can access the Samsung notes in your phone on your laptop. And you can even sync up notifications and use something like multi-control where you can use keyboard and trackpad of just one device to control multiple devices. So yeah, if you've got a Galaxy smartphone or a Galaxy tablet, this is only going to add more to your productivity. So let's go ahead and talk a bit more about this and let's start with build and design. It's got a very standard design and build quality. You know, it's, it's an all aluminum finish, weighs between 1.5 to 1.6 kgs, and it has majority of the ports that you would be using. But it's also not as heavy and thick. For the price, it's just about right, portable and easy to carry. The bezels are quite thin on the left and right edges, a bit more at the top to make space for the camera and the dual array mic. We'll talk more about the video and the call quality ahead in the video, so keep watching. Okay, one of the good things is that there are no fans on the sides spitting out hot air. So if you're using an external mouse and you place your hand, you know, right next to the laptop, you're not gonna feel that heat at all because all the heat is venting from behind here and from under the lid. So it's comfortable. The speakers, they're right here and they're basically downward facing. Now the device does come with a 45 watt charger in the box and it's just this, you know, there's nothing else. It's just this and the wire and the wire is quite long. And by the way, you can use this charger to charge any other Galaxy device at their peak speeds. But there are a few things to note about the design. The chassis in the keyboard has too much flex. Part of the reason is that it is a full size keyboard with a number pad, but still, this is quite a lot of flex. It could have been reduced. Second, it does not open without holding it down. So if you just pull it up, it's gonna make the laptop jump a bit. And third, that lid shuts down if it's too close. It doesn't just stay there. And so if you ever want to just take a break from work, not put your laptop on standby, you have to be a little careful. Now these may not be issues for all of you and it does not even impact performance as such, but just a few things to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the ports. So the Book 2 offers sufficient connectivity, except for a LAN port, there's everything you possibly need. You've got a total of two USB 3.2 ports, two USB-C ports, a full-size HDMI port, a headphone jack, and a microSD card slot. Of course, if you're charging the laptop, then you only have one USB-C port left, so keep that in mind. The only thing I believe Samsung could have done is to give an SD card slot and not a micro SD card slot because I really do feel that there are more SD card users that can benefit from a slot than there are micro SD card users that can benefit from this. Now, let's get on to the display and it's quite average. It's a very standard non-touch 15.6 inch LCD with a 1080p that is a full HD resolution. The screen is decently bright. It's 300 nits, which is not that bad actually. You know, it was considered super two years back, so it's still pretty good. And if you're outdoors and it's not crazy sunshine, you'll be fine. And if you still think that you need a bit more boost in brightness, you could go to Samsung settings and then turn on HDR+. It's going to make a bit of a difference. And in terms of color, I actually found it to be quite good. It's definitely not, you know, at AMOLED level, but for an LCD, I think it was quite good. Now let's come to the most important part, the performance. The version that I have has a Core i7 CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. This is one of the more higher performance laptop in the series, but this comes with Iris Xe integrated graphics and does not have a dedicated GPU. What all of this means is that it's a really good laptop for everyday office computing, just like the Book 2 360 was. It's not suitable for workflows that are CPU or GPU demanding. 
But if you want to multitask between multiple office applications, juggle between too many Chrome tabs while having many extensions activated, listen to music on the side and even have a Skype or Zoom video call, you can do all of that simultaneously without any issue. But what about some lightweight photoshopping or video editing? This laptop is good enough to help you create short form content like YouTube Shorts, TikTok or Instagram Reels. That should be smooth. Anything more than that, it's going to struggle since it does not have a dedicated GPU. On Photoshop, as long as you're not dealing with extremely high resolution files, you'll be okay. But if you work on very complex and intense Photoshop files with many, many layers and very heavy graphics, the computer will slow you down. And no, you can't use it for very graphic intensive applications like After Effects, which requires 3D rendering or even AAA title level gaming. It's just not possible because this does not have a dedicated graphic card. For developers, I think it's a pretty good machine for coding. Uh, even if you're someone who works across coding platforms, remote connections or virtual environments, you'll be fine. Now, quickly touching upon the software part. So it comes with Windows 11 loaded. Uh, you get an activated version of Office Home, which is really great. But where this really excels is its seamless connections with other Galaxy devices like smartphones and tablets. For example, with Samsung Flow, I can simply replicate my phone's screen on the Galaxy Book 2 or just copy stuff here and paste it on my phone and vice versa. I can access all my notifications and just send files by tapping on plus here and selecting a file and hit send. With Samsung Gallery on the computer, I can access not only photos that are on my phone, but also access shared libraries that I have with other family and friends that use Galaxy devices. There's a ton of other things that work with other Galaxy devices you might have, and I think that's where it makes even more sense to get a Galaxy Book 2 as a laptop. Now, let's talk about heat management. And as I said earlier, there are only two vents, one at the bottom of the chassis and the other at the junction between the keyboard and the lid. And the heat management has been quite well. Like I was trying to edit a 4K video and I could hear the fans, but nothing too loud. And you know, all the while that I was working, I really couldn't even feel the heat. It was slightly warm, but only if I actually took my hand and literally placed it next to the vent to check. But very pleasant otherwise. By the way, you can cycle through various performance modes by simply tapping this button here and going from high performance to quiet to balanced to optimize that easy. And this is something I quickly shot using the front camera. It's a 720p webcam and that's why I've had to scale this video a little bit more to you know somewhat fit this 4K frame. And the audio quality is also what you're hearing. Now there's also intelligent noise cancelling which uses AI to remove unwanted noise from both the sides of a call. And whether it's good or bad, you decide. But I really think that laptop manufacturers, they ought to improve the front-facing cameras. I mean, smartphones have 4K front cameras, tablets have 1080p now and even 4K. So I don't understand why laptops still don't have that kind of quality given the fact that we are on video calls even more than we were earlier. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard now. And as you can see, this is a full size keyboard with the number pad, albeit a bit squished, but it is there if you need it. You get the fingerprint sensor right here to unlock and get into Windows. And there's no facial login here, just in case if you were wondering. So no Windows hello feature. And of course, then there are all these shortcut keys, which are obviously helpful. But let's hear what the keyboard sounds like. The typing experience is okay. You know, if you're not picky about keyboards, you're not gonna find anything wrong with it. It's just something you'll get used to within a day or two of constant use. The trackpad has a very good size. It's quite tall actually, and that's good. But I do wish that the actual click or you know the button register could happen with slightly less pressure. But in any case, with this size keyboard, I would recommend that you use a mouse and not depend on the trackpad because you're just gonna have to travel too often between, you know, large size keyboard and finally coming to the battery so on an average this lasted me about four to six hours but in fact i had a very mixed use i was installing and updating many apps then i was scripting a video while listening to music tried some premiere pro editing in 4k and some real editing so some things were cpu intensive and some not so much i kept the brightness at about 40 percent on an average throughout and my performance setting was set to optimized and all of this together was yielding me about four to six hours on an average. 
All in all, if you're looking for a generic laptop with high performance for everyday use, this is a pretty good laptop to consider. And with options going all the way up to Core i7 CPU and up to 16 gigs of RAM, you won't even feel bottlenecked. But where this laptop really shines is if you do plan to use it with other Galaxy devices that you own, like the Galaxy smartphone or a Galaxy tablet. All right, that's it guys on the Galaxy Book 2. If you guys have any questions, make sure you put that in the comment section and I'll surely get back to you with the answers. And if you guys enjoyed watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. I'll see you guys in the next one.